Okay, we're going to begin our uh, program, and as Andrew said, uh, we have a very high quality panel uh, that will give a good uh, insights into what is involved with uh, CER. Uh, the title, of course, as Andrew said, is Making the co uh, co Connections, the New Four Ps of CER, Pharma, Payer, Provider, and Patient. Those are the viewpoints that you're going to uh, hear. Uh, I have a disclosure statement. Uh, I do uh, uh, give some time to Pharma Foundation, uh, and I have received an honorarium as a speaker and chair of uh, a health, uh, health Outcomes uh, Committee, and I have uh, some work I'm doing now with Celgene on uh, policy, reviewing policy articles for them. Okay, the program objectives for uh, this program are, are basically two. Uh, we're going to educate you, the audience, on CER. What is it? Where did it come from? Uh, what are the viewpoints of the various players that will be speaking on uh, CER, the good, the bad, and uh, the ugly? Uh, I'll, we'll talk about the strengths, the limitations, the potential effect on patients and population and care physicians would be our first objective. And then uh, we will use st the stakeholders' viewpoints representing the health plans, the public health sector, the government, and the pharmaceutical industry to present their viewpoints on uh, comparative effectiveness. How many of you heard of comparative effectiveness? Okay, so most of you have heard of it at least. Uh, the chrono chronology of the federal CER acts, and I was involved with a lot of these. Uh, I worked in policy. I was a Robert Johnson policy fellow on the Hill, but I worked for policy for the company, uh, Sanofi Aventis. But the um, thing to watch about the chronology of CR is, is there's four parts to it. In 97, ARC, the Agency for Health Research and Quality, forms 13 Comparative Effectiveness Review Centers. Uh, John Eisenberg uh, wanted to do this and had done it, uh, and Carolyn Clancy picked up uh, in, the, in uh, 97 with those centers. They had a yearly budget. Notice two things. The name was the Comparative Effectiveness Research Center. Yearly budget was 15 million. In 2003, six years later, you have ARC uh, with an uh, ARC Effective Healthcare Program is created by the Medicare Modernization Act. It was really the Patient Protection and uh, Medicare um, Modernization Act. And they approve uh, initially in 2005 15 million and then jump it to 30 million. Now, there were a lot of dynamics in those early years between the industries, the people that were being uh, CER would affect with their comparative effectiveness reviews. Uh, so, to, and the way to do that is to focus on the budget. They would reduce the budget. In 2009, again, six years later, you have the American Recovery Act. And this was like came out of the blue. Uh, and I remember when it broke, I couldn't believe it, uh, and it was $1.1 billion that went into CER. Uh, 400,000 uh, went to HHS, who evident eventually gave it back to ARC to use, so ARC had $800,000. 400,000 was given to NIH. ARC got the money first and, and carried it over there to send a signal to NIH that you better be getting into comparative effectiveness research instead of just clinical research. Uh, in 2010, a year later, the Affordable Care Act uh, is passed and creates the PCORI, uh, the Patient Center Outcomes Research Institute, with a budget of this year of uh, 390 million. 72 million of it goes back to ARC to do some of the studies that will be required. So that's sort of the, the layout on the legislation for how this moved and how important it was that it got into all this legislation. Now, in the PCORI bill, they do an interesting thing. They uh, uh, defined, and as they do in all legislation, comparative effectiveness and uh, defined it as, as you can see, they called it clinical comparative effectiveness, uh, is research evaluating and comparing health outcomes and the clinical effectiveness, risk, and benefits of two or more medical treatments. And then notice that there's a subparagraph B that defines what treatments are. Initially, when the bill was first formed, uh, it was like uh, it was drugs. And all of a sudden, it, it expanded at the end to treatments, which would cover everything, from uh, comparing formularies in a plan, how effective they are, 
for uh, elderly uh, patients to pharmaceuticals to diagnostics to anything that's used to treat patients. So who will capture the benefits of all this investment and what's going on? And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to get viewpoints from the players that are in, the, uh, in healthcare that are uh, having to deal with uh, comparative effectiveness. Uh, now, there are responsibilities. I always like to throw these up here for the audience. Uh, for the presenters, of course, you want to be prepared, organized, and these are top-notch presenters. The main point, uh, they will link main points, and they will be concise, punctual, and uh, egalitarian. Uh, audience actively listens, pays attention, anticipatory listening, meaning you form questions, evaluates, evaluate so you can provide preventers feedback. We're going to expect questions, a lot of questions at the end. So I like to see, like when I was in basic training, the first sergeant used to say, take out your pencils and take notes. So if you want to write some notes down on questions. And as moderator, I'm going to be brief, keeps everybody on time, and make sure uh, questions are uh, asked. OK, our first speaker uh, is David Hickam. Uh, D uh, David is Director of, of the Assessment of Prevention, Diagnosis, and Treatment Options Program at the Patient Center for Outcomes Research Institute. He's responsible for developing PCORI's research program that evaluates comparisons among alternative clinical strategies in all clinical domains. So he's very in with what he's doing with PCORI. It's very important. He was formerly professor in the Department of Medicine at Oregon Health and Science University and uh, is a, and a senior investigator in the or Oregon Evidence-Based Practice Center. So he was up to his ears in uh, comparative effect effectiveness. So I'll turn it over now to you, uh, David. 